Please, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to welcome you good people here on behalf of our sponsor. We are one of the few remaining radio shows that's fortunate enough to have a sponsor. So, uh, <laughs> if you enjoy yourself during the next half hour, you could do all of us a big favor, if you would, and that is sometime this week, stop by your neighborhood RCA Victor dealer and pick up a 27-inch television set or a record player <laughs> or something, because we'd like to be working up here next year at this time. <laughs> Well, as you know, maybe you do not know, but this year we are starting a new time. We're heard now on Friday nights on NBC, immediately following Bob Hope. And as you know, in addition to a new time, Phil's on his own this year, out for himself. So what do you say we all get together and give a real rousing welcome to a real swell guy, the man who discovered the South, Phil Harris. Let's hear it! Seriously, I can't tell you what it means to me to have you come out here all by myself. You're all laughing and smiling and applauding and glad to see me. And I just want to tell you I love you for it because I need it. <laughs> I've been with Jack Benny for 16 years and there ain't no money connected with that job. <laughs> Old dry pockets, boy. <laughs> Takes you in a room on Saturday night, gives you a fast course of love and bloom and you've had it. <laughs> I got off to a bad start when I married Alice. They told me she has money, but I'll be damned if I can find it. <laughs> I've looked everywhere. <laughs> hey, I want to say, isn't it wonderful having all these, uh, uh, the sailors, all these guys from the Navy in here? <laughs> Especially to the max. I gotta be with it because I was in the Navy during the last war myself. I fought the Battle of Catalina. <laughs> You're laughing. We lost eight lobster traps. <laughs> hey, they had a very unique way of uh, selecting their enlisted men according to what they've done in private life. When I went into the Navy, for instance, I went in with a couple of buddies of mine. One of these guys was a street cleaner, and they put him on a mine sweeper. And this other guy I run around with, he was a construction guy, tore down buildings and everything, and they put him on a destroyer. How I ever wound up on a ferry boat, I'll never... <laughs> Story about the guy walked the barber shop. The guy walked the barber shop, walked up the barber says, How many head of him? The barber says three. The guy went out, he don't come back. Next day comes in again, he says to the barber, How many head of him? The barber says three. The guy goes out, he don't come back. Now the barber's getting nuts, you know, he's on his feet all day and they're clinking to them scissors, you know, and standing and doing some of them Bakersfield guys coming. So this guy says, uh, Calls the boot black uh, over. And he says, Say, the barber says, The boot black. He says, Every day, there's a guy comes in here and wants to know how many ahead. And he says, I tell him he goes out, he don't come back. He says, If he does it tomorrow, follow him. I want to know. <laughs> Next day, the guy comes in, walks up to the barber, says, How many ahead of me? The barber says, Three. The guy walks out, the boot black follows him, comes back in about 20 minutes. The barber says, Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Boot black says, To your house. <laughs> Hear about the guy who used to party his hair in the middle? This guy used to party his hair in the middle. See, he got tired of it. He went down, he had the barber put the part from here over to here. Then he had to give me bangs in the back and bangs in the front. The guy said it got awfully monotonous because people kept coming up whispering in his nose. <laughs> Here. <laughs> well, I got one more. Let's see. Oh, this is a cute joke. You hear about the drunk that fell out of the 12-story window? Oh, this guy's blind. Oh, blind drunk, and he falls out of the 12-story window, and he hits boom on the ground. There's a big crowd around. He gets up, and he's brushing himself off. The fellow walked up and says, what happened? He says, damn fine, though. I just got here. <laughs> You know, uh, whatever little success, ladies and gentlemen, that we've attained, uh, uh, of course, uh, I want you to know that it isn't due to one or two people. We have a wonderful organization, and just like in the Navy or the Army or uh, the Waves or the uh, WAX or the any other organization, you've got to have uh, a competent organization. You've got to have a bunch of guys, a whole unit going for you, and that's what we've got. 
And I'm very happy and very proud to tell you that I have one of the best organizations, I think, in radio. For instance, everyone you see sitting on that stand does an outstanding job on his or her particular interest. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's things that I know that you don't know. <laughs> now, you take the leader. He's okay. He, um, we're very happy about him because he's a genius, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm, now, now I'm back to level. I mean, we think that he's going to wind up with being one of the greatest composers we have in this business. Already, he's had two of his famous plays in the Hollywood Bowl. He has been doing some of the biggest motion pictures for 10 years. He has been nominated for the Academy Award six times. He was nominated last year for the beautiful directing and, and uh, arranging of all of the wonderful music that you heard in that great picture, The Hans Christian Anderson Story. This is Walter Sharp and his music. <laughs> You think that Navy's rough, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I got a, some guys. I'd like to take time for you to meet all the guys in the band because everyone is important, not because I'm going to pick a couple out. We have boys in here that are originators of the Dixieland. A lot of the guys who were with the, the Bobcats, a lot of fellas. But all of them are important, but I got a couple of guys I know you'd like to meet. I have one fellow I'm going to introduce to you that... Uh, Loaded, don't need nothing, but he, um, <laughs> he comes over here because he likes to be around me. <laughs> and uh, he has his own show, and I want you to listen to it. Incidentally, it's on Friday night. It's on later tonight, I'm sure, about 11 o'clock, I think. I'll check within a minute. But the one and only Albino Ray, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I want you to catch that show. He's on with the King Sisters, and they do a beautiful job. So if you're around the television at 10 tonight, you tune in on NBC. Here's a guy that worked with my father. And uh, <laughs> Dad used to tell me about him. He says, Phil, he said, this boy has a terrific eye this year, and uh, I think if we can ever get him out of the circus, he might amount. So, <laughs> since that time, he went on to great heights. His records are now, ladies and gentlemen, are collector's items. Some of the records that he made years ago, and the ones that he made now, no, I'm not kidding you, and the ones, of course, he does a little touch-up job here, but no. <laughs> the one and only Red Nichols and his five pennies. All it is, because without her, the program wouldn't be possible. I'm not going to eulogize going to a big thing. I'm only going to tell you she's not only the most beautiful gal in the world, but this kid's got talent, too. Alice Faye! I think her. about me, is you, honey? Oh. <laughs> we have a guest. I say a guest. It's the first time he's been on with us this season, but we use him a lot. In fact, we use him every opportunity, but that's pretty tough because this guy does all of the important things in television and in radio, and I know that you remember him from the wonderful work that he does on the Bob Hope Show. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, Otherman. Yes, sir. <laughs> Might be a little young and too good looking for this show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a kid that steals our show every week. We're very happy about it because he's got a lot of talent. My wonderful kid plays the part of Julie Sabrugio, the grocery boy, Walter Tepper. <laughs> We have a newcomer to our program. Very happy. He's very important. He's made a lot of pictures. I know that you've seen some of his pictures recently on television. A very important actor. We're very happy to have him a part of our little company. He plays the part of William Alice's brother and does a dandy job. Mr. John Hubbard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> those wonderful singers that make all those commercials on the Benny Show have been with us ever since we started. The four sportsmen, ladies and gentlemen.
the one and only Elliot Lewis. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys for coming in to see us. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you do, for God's sake, laugh, will you? <laughs> Thank you. Curly! Hey, Curly! Wait till you hear what I did. I bought a kangaroo. You what? I'll make a fortune. This guy had two kangaroos, and I bought the one that boxes. A boxing kangaroo? What's the matter with you, Elliot? You're crazy or something? You can't make no money with no boxing kangaroo. Should have bought the one that knits, huh? <laughs> RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ray Singer, Dick Chevrolet, and Ed James, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight's little aberration is aptly titled, How to Repair a Living Room, or There'll Be Lots of Sand for the Concrete Mother, I'm Coming Home with a Load. <laughs> stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. It's morning in the Harris household, and Phil, shy, modest, and retiring, is singing as he heads for the kitchen. Wait a minute. Shy, modest, retiring? Well, that's what it says. <laughs> I dream of Harris with the light brown hair. <laughs> Voice like an angel. Talent he can spare. <laughs> he is so... Oh, hi, Alice. How's my little love bug this morning? Oh, Phil, I was going to surprise you. You raised my allowance? <laughs> <laughs> no, I baked the cake. Oh. You're disappointed. Look, honey, I love you, but let's face it. You don't know how to bake. Why, Phil? You're a wonderful girl, a beautiful wife, a gorgeous mother, and your cakes would make a great lining for a bulletproof vest. <laughs> you think they're heavy, huh? Okay, I'll take this one out of the oven and show you. Hmm. The idea of saying my cakes are heavy. Well, this one's as light as... <sighs> Why, it doesn't weigh a... <clears throat> Phil? Yeah? Help me lift it out of the oven. <laughs> Too much to lift alone, huh? No, it isn't either. It's just stuck. I tell you, my cakes are not heavy. Okay, they're not heavy. But how come we got the only stove in town with bow legs? <laughs> Stop it, Phil. I think my cake looks beautiful. But, honey, it's lopsided. It's higher on one side than the other. Well, that's not the fault of the cake. The floor slopes down. <laughs> the floor... Oh, kid, you've been standing over this stove too long. <laughs> well, it does. Ever since you and Elliot bounced that derrick around the living room, this whole side of the house slopes. Hey, you want to know something? You're right. The floor is a half inch lower than the molding. I'd better go outside and have a look. I'll get out there and crawl under the house and examine it. Be careful, Phil. You be careful. While I'm under the kitchen floor, don't drop that cake. <laughs> I'd better go with you. Maybe I can help. Huh? Okay, come on. I know there's an opening outside here somewhere. It should be right around... Yeah, yeah, there it is. I'll just take the screen off and crawl through. Uh, nah, that ain't gonna work. I can't make it through there. My shoulders are too broad. <laughs> Maybe you can get through, Alice. I don't think so, Phil. My hips are too... <laughs> I'll make it. <laughs> it is a tight squeeze. Yes, yes. Hey, wait a minute, honey. I'll grab your feet and give you a little shove. Come on. <clears throat> yes, 
Just a little more and you'll make it. Just... Hi, Curly. Oh, hello, Ellie. What do you got in your hands? <laughs> Alice's feet. <laughs> what happened to the rest of her? <laughs> I'm shoving her under the house. <laughs> Oh. Nags you too much, huh? Oh. <laughs> nah, don't be funny. You see, the kitchen floor is sagging and it probably needs a new support. That's why I shoved Alice under there. <laughs> I know materials are expensive, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> What's wrong? You and Elliot broke one of the beams. We did? I just got here. Last week, Elliot. Last week. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, and, and you'd better get a contractor right away and have it fixed. Well, uh, don't worry about it. Me and Elliot will figure something out. Hi, Elliot. Hello, Alice. Bye, Elliot. See you later. Charming girl. <laughs> you know, Elliot, I've just been thinking. What? Now, what's so hard about fixing a broken beam? We don't need no contractors. You know something? I'm going to make a deal with you. You help me, and I'll pay you $2 an hour. All right. But you know the union rules. i got to get paid from the time I left home. Okay, okay. When would you leave home? When I was 16. <laughs> uh, the way I figure, that's uh, 18 years at $2 an hour... Uh, I would come to, uh, let me see. All right, stop. You'll never make it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Yeah. What? All we need is a jack to raise the house, and then a new beam and some cement. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a cinch. Come on, kid. Let's get this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Curly. This is tough work, jacking the house up like this. It's hot, too, even with our shirts on. You stop complaining. Just keep pumping on the jack, huh? We got to get the corner of the kitchen up a little higher. Come on, pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> Here, Curly, I think we're lifting the corner of the house a little too high. Elliot, it ain't even close to level yet. Besides, Alice is in the kitchen, and she's going to let us know when it's even. Go ahead. Pump it up. Come on. Hey, fellas! Stop raising this side of the house. You got it too high already. Well, why didn't you come out and tell me? I can't. Every time I reach the kitchen door, I slide back into the dining room. <laughs> you better lower it, Phil. All right, all right. Come on, Elliot. Got it too high. Oh? Yeah. Now, look, we got to let that jack down, but wait a minute. What? Slow. 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 Just ease the jack down so that it don't slip, huh? Easy. All right, all right. That's it. Slow. Slow. I think we just about... Good morning, Philip. I'll scalp him. <laughs> one hair at a time. Either one of you fellas see my arm? <laughs> Willie, you bird brain, look what you did. You made the jack slip and the house settled back again. You know, Alice told me you were out here. What are you two doing anyway? We're trying to raise the house so we can put a new foundation under the corner. Oh, well, then it's a good thing I came along. I'm very proficient at this sort of thing. I can set in the cement... Okay, go set him. <laughs> as soon as you're hard, we'll roll you under the house. Look, Willie, we'll go away. We're having enough trouble as it is. Oh, fellas, how you doing? Oh, we're doing fine. Thanks to your brother, we got to start all over again. Yeah, look, Curly, you jack up the house, I'll go and mix the cement. Good. What are you going to mix it in? Oh, I don't know. I'll find something around the place. All right, go ahead. Philip, you're going to require some help. Just wait till I take my shirt off. No, no. Do I have to look at that purple road map again? <laughs> okay. All right, Willie, latch onto that jack handle and get the pumping. Come on, Tallulah, pump it up, pump it up. 
Willie, stay on the ground. You're going up with a jack. Hey, Curly, are you ready for the cement yet? I'm getting it mixed. Oh, you're getting it mixed, huh? Yeah. What are you mixing it in? I put it in that cement mixer you got on the service porch. A cement mixer on the service? Elliot, that's my washing machine. <laughs> it is? <laughs> Well, that'll give us nice, clean cement. Well, where do you manage to get such stupid friends? I got contacts. <laughs> Don't get excited, honey. It ain't gonna hurt the washing machine. But I had my new girdle in there, and now it's mixed in with the cement. <laughs> well, honey, I guess your foundation is gonna be in the foundation. <laughs> better than to let you two do this job. I'm going in and shut the machine off before it's completely ruined. She seems to be upset about something, Colonel. Yeah, she'll get over it. You know something? What's that? I think we ought to get that old beam out first. Suppose I tie this rope around it, then the three of us can yank it out, okay? Okay. All right, wait till I get it knotted. I'll just put a sheep shank on this kid. Just cinch it up. There. Now, the three of us just throw the rope over our shoulders and pull. Huh? All right. One, two, three, heave. <clears throat> well, if it ain't the vulgar <clears throat> boatman. Yeah, oh, heave, ho. Yeah, oh, heave, ho. <clears throat> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Why don't you go home, Julius? Can't you see we're busy? How do we look, kid? <laughs> What's so funny? You look like tree halibuts in a snowstorm. <laughs> Is that so? That's telling him, Willie. I didn't know Willie could ad lib like that. Oh, he's a mule. Oh. <laughs> now, where were we? We were trying to pull the beam out with the rope. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you crawl into the house and knock the beam out with a sledgehammer? Because we're too big to fit under the house, that's why. And where are we going to find somebody stupid enough? Don't you look at me like that. I ain't climbing under no house. Philip, I have an excellent idea. Great, I'll pack your bags. <laughs> Julius has his truck here. Now, why don't we tie the rope to his rear axle and pull the beam out that way? Julius has a rear axle? I believe he means the truck, Curly. <laughs> oh, I sort of liked it better the other way. <laughs> well, what do you think, Philip? Well, let's give it a try. What can we lose? Is it okay with you, Julius? Certainly. Give me the rope. I'll tie it to the truck. Now, never mind. I'm going to tie it on. I'm going to make sure it's good and tight. Oh, sheep shank this kid, too. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what you do, Julius. You go start the motor. Okay. You get it good and tight now, Curly. I'm getting it good and tight. Okay, Julius, let her rip. Julius! Julius, stop the truck! Julius! Hello, Elliot! Hi, Alice! Curly, where do you suppose Alice and the kitchen are going? <laughs> you know, my mother told me they'd be days like this. <laughs> I remember once she said to me, Philip, she says to me, Someday you'll be standing in the driveway and Alice in the kitchen will go by. She said that, huh? And when that happens, she says, there's only one thing you can do. Listen closely because she'll be standing in the window singing a verse and two choruses of Tosti's Goodbye. <laughs> Choo, choo, choo.
train Chug chugging at the station Choo choo train Conductor full of cord Choo choo train You know our destination All aboard Choo choo train Chug chugging out by Jiminy Engineer Choo 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 to two Smoke and smoke by puffing up the chimney We're on route Pour to fix the room And pour to bring some ice Pour to get a broom Sweep out the shoes and rice Pour to thanks a lot You've been so very nice Pour to tell you what Here's a quarter Shoo shoo porter Choo choo train Please pardon us for hiding I'll explain choo, choo. In case you didn't guess Choo choo train choo, choo. It's heaven to be riding The Honeymoon Express Fix the room and pour to bring some ice. Pour to get a broom. Sweep out the shoes and rice. Pour to thanks a lot. You've been so very nice. Pour to tell you what. Here's a quarter. Shoo shoo porter. Choo choo train. Please pardon us for hiding. I'll explain in case you didn't guess. Choo choo train. It's heaven to be riding. The honeymoon express. Yes, this is Mrs. Harris. Oh, Mr. Strong, your men did a beautiful job repairing the house. Yes, yes, everything looks fine. The paper hanger? He will? Tomorrow morning? Oh, well, I'd better get downtown and finish selecting the wallpaper. Well, thanks a lot for calling, Mr. Strong. Goodbye. Who was that, honey? Mr. Strong, the contractor. And you'll be so happy to know... That when you and Elliot got through fixing the beam, it only cost another $3,800 to fix the rest of the house. <laughs> well, that seems pretty reasonable. Don't it, Elliot? Oh, sure, as long as you put it in a charred barrel and rock it once a month, there's a chemical reaction. <laughs> Elliot! <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, Alice, wait a minute. Where are you going? Downtown to do some shopping. And Phil? Yeah, honey? While I'm gone, don't fix anything. Please. We won't, baby. We'll just sort of stand around. <laughs> stand around quiet, huh? What's wrong with her? <laughs> ah, she's a little burned up. Contractor charged her 3,800 bucks. For one little beam? Yeah. Of course, he threw in the windows and the door and put the kitchen back where it was. <laughs> I'd have done it for half. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll get that little. All right. Yes? I'm from Kerwin's decorating shop. I got some wallpaper for you. Okay, buddy. Put it down over there. Yeah. Say, uh, this is where Alice Faye lives, isn't it? That's right. Hey, uh, you don't suppose... Well, could I get her autograph or something? Yeah, you could, but she's out right now. Oh, darn it, I never have any luck. I'm, uh... Bill Harris. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of anxious to see her in person. I'm a fan of hers. <laughs> I'm Phil Harris. <laughs> I listen to her radio show every week. Her radio show? Gee, when she sings them love songs, it's like she was singing them straight to me. Hey, buddy. I'm Phil Harris. <laughs> you told me three times. Do you know Mr. Fam Miss Faye, mister? Slightly. She does my laundry. Of course I know her. I'm related to her. Well, you ought to be proud, mister. You sure got a beautiful daughter. <laughs> Wise paper carrier. Daughter. Hmm. 
You leave the chin strap off one night and you start to sag. <laughs> Alone, that to Andy Devine. Um, hey, Elliot, the wallpaper's here. What wallpaper? Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you, Alice is having new paper put up in the living room. Well, let's go. Where? Let's start putting up the wallpaper. Okay, I'll go. Wait a minute. <laughs> Not so fast, Cleet. <laughs> What's the matter now, Curly? We ain't hanging no wallpaper. We ain't? Look. We put in a $20 beam, and it cost Alice 3800 bucks. so we ain't putting up no wallpaper. Curly, what's the hanging wallpaper? You stick it on a wall. Look, Elliot, let's face it. We're a couple of clever kids, but we don't know how to hang no wallpaper. How do you know? Did you ever try? No. You see what I mean? <laughs> you could be the greatest wallpaper hanger since Michelangelo. <laughs> but you're never going to know unless you try. Yeah. That mic could really throw that paste around. <laughs> I think you got something, kid. Well, that's what I keep telling you. We couldn't do no damage, could we? Us? <laughs> what a preposterous idea. Well, then let's give it a whirl. Look, you go out in the garage and get a couple of ladders, and I'll mix up a batch of paste. Okay, easy on the vermouth. Hey, Curly, I don't want to say anything, but ain't this kind of funny paper for a living room? Red barns, blue horses, green cows, all them different colored animals. Look, Alice knows more about this than we do, so start putting it up and don't ask so many questions, huh? Put okay, it up. Okay, Mr. Angelo. Suppose you get up on that ladder and start on the space over the door. Okay. Hey, Elliot. Huh? Hand me that bucket of paste. Okay. Here you are. Careful now. Don't spill it. That's filled clear to the top. Anybody home? I brought the groceries. Hey, we're in here, Julius, but don't come in. If you open that door, you'll knock me off this ladder. You mean if I open the door like this? Ooh. Now, look at that mess. Paste all over the place. And look at that big sloppy blob right in the middle of the rug. I'll thank you to stop insulting me. And... <laughs> Elliot, Elliot, look at me. I'm covered from head to foot with white paste. <laughs> what are you laughing at, you knothead? He looks like the bride on top of a wedding cake. <laughs> Do something. Get this paste off me. It's beginning to get stiff. What's the matter with you anyway, Julius? Don't you want to grow up to be a human being? Curly, will you please get this stuff off of me? I can't move my arms now. Will you keep quiet a minute, Elliot? This boy needs a talking to. Talk him. to him later. Get this paste off of my face. It's starting to harden around my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Are you through talking, Elliot? I guess he is. Hey, wait a minute now, Julius. He ain't kidding. Look at him. Feel him. Ooh, he's as hard as a rock. How am I going to soften him up? Why don't you soak him in typentine overnight? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Julius, please, why don't you go home? This is serious. Just look at the condition poor Elliot's in. Well, he ought to be ashamed of himself getting stiff so early in the afternoon. <laughs> to do something about that kid. How you feeling, Elliot? <laughs> Would you mind rephrasing that? <laughs> all right, all right. Now take it easy. I'll get some hot water and soften you up. And in no time, you'll be the same old Elliot and I... 
Come to think of it, is that what we want? <laughs> All right, I was only, I'm only kidding. I'll get the stuff off you, and then we can start paper in this room. You get it. <laughs> ah, there she is, Elliot. All papered. Yep. All done, man. Hey, look at it. Hmm? Looks pretty, too, don't it? Yo, Curly... Ain't this paper kind of morbid for a living room? What's morbid? What are you talking about? It looks great. Yeah, but... Well, look at all those dead animals laying on their backs with their feet sticking up in the air. <laughs> what are you, crazy or something? They ain't no dead... Elliot, you flea brain, you put that paper on upside down. <laughs> no, we're never going to be able to get it off. What am I going to do about Alice? Teach her to walk on her hands? Oh. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't do the whole room. Look at my side. Looks fine, don't it? I can't tell. It's too dark to see. You know that wallpaper sure darkened up the room. That's just because the shades are down. Go over to the window. Pull up the shades. Okay. <laughs> Curly. Yeah. You sure you had windows in this room? <laughs> oh, no. You papered over the windows. <laughs> Elliot, how stupid can a guy be? Now I'm going to have to go outside and find the windows. I'll be right back. Elliot. What? I won't say nothing about your windows if you don't say nothing about my door. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how stupid a guy can be. All right. It ain't funny. We got to find that door if we want to get out of here. Bill? Bill, where are you? Oh, no, no, it's Alice. Now, let's not say nothing and maybe she'll go away. Are you in the living room, Phil? I want to show you... <laughs> Hey, that's a clever girl. She found the door. <laughs> what in the world is going on here? Oh, no. My beautiful living room. Look at it. I knew you'd like it, honey. <laughs> oh, Phil, why did you do it? Now, wait a minute, honey. Wait a minute. What's so terrible about it? We'll trim the paper off the windows and get the paper off the door and, and give the animals some vitamins so they stand up. <laughs> It's not that bad, honey. It's not that bad. It's not only crooked, upside down and backwards. It also happens to be the paper I picked out for the girls' playroom. Bye. 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 Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. RCA Victor's new 45 extended play records give you more music for less money. Almost 15 minutes per record. They make the Victrola 45 phonograph a better buy than ever. It's the simplest automatic phonograph made. All play and no work. You can listen to an hour and a half of your favorite music without changing a record. Listen to the Victrola 45 phonograph with the economical new 45 EP records at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. This is Phil again. Last year, motor vehicle accidents led the list as the nation's number one accident killer. Too many of us think that... Too many of us still think of accidents as striking only the other fellow. We forget that each of us could be the victim of an accident through our own thoughtlessness or carelessness. So no matter where you drive, drive carefully. Thank you, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed was High Everback. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This was an NBC Radio Network production.